Look, can we talk for a moment? I need to tell you something. I um, should probably have told you earlier. I don't know. I doubt it. I've never liked it, that's for sure. I told you before how Al Eamon raised me, right? That my mother was a serving girl at the castle and he took me in? The reason he did that was because, well, because my father was King Marek, which made Caelan my half-brother, I suppose. I would have told you, but it never really meant anything to me. I was inconvenient, a possible threat to Kaylin's rule, and so they kept me secret. I'd never talked about it to anyone. Everyone who knew either resented me for it or they coddled me. Even Duncan kept me out of the fighting because of it. I didn't want you to know as long as possible. I'm sorry. Why wouldn't he? He was King Marek's best friend. I don't know if that means anything, though. I certainly never considered the idea that it might ever be important. At any rate, that's it. That's what I had to tell you. I thought you should know about it. Let's hope not. I'm the son of a commoner and a Grey Warden to boot. It was made very clear to me early on that there was no room for me raising any rebellions or such nonsense. And that's fine by me. No, if there's an heir to be found, it's Al Eamon himself. He's not of royal blood, but he is Kaelin's uncle, and more importantly, very popular with the people. Though, if he's really as sick as we've heard... Oh, no, I, I, I don't want to think about that. I really don't. So there you have it. Now can we move on? And I'll just pretend you still think I'm some nobody who was too lucky to die with the rest of the Grey Wardens. Oh, lovely. I'm going to regret this. Somehow I just know it. I thought I saw travelers coming down the road. Though I scarcely believed it. Have you come to help us? So you... you don't know? Has nobody out there heard? He could be dead for all we know. Nobody's heard from the castle in days. We're under attack. Monsters come out of the castle every night and attack us until dawn. Everyone's been fighting. And dying. Well, that's just typical, isn't it? We've no army to defend us. No Arl and no king to send us help. So many are dead. And those left are terrified they're next. Hold on, what is this evil that's attacking you? I, I, I don't rightly know. I'm sorry, nobody does. I should take you to Ban Tegan. He's all that's holding us together. He'll want to see you. Ban Tegan, our Lehman's brother, he's here. Yes. It's not far, if you'll come with me. And who are these people with you? They are obviously not simple travelers. No, my lord. They just arrived, and I thought you would want to see them. Well done, Thomas. Greetings, friends. My name is Tegan, Ban of Rainosphere, brother to the Arl. I remember you, Ban Tegan. Though the last time we met, I was a lot younger and covered in mud. Covered in mud? Alistair? It is you, isn't it? You're alive! This is wonderful news. Still alive, yes. Though not for long if Tern Loghain has anything to say about it. Indeed. Loghain would have us believe all Grey Wardens died along with my nephew, amongst other things. So you are a Grey Warden as well. A pleasure to meet you. I wish it were under better circumstances. You're here to see my brother. Unfortunately, that might be a problem. Eamon is gravely ill. 
What a remarkable coincidence. No one has heard from the castle in days. No guards patrol the walls, and no one has responded to my shouts. The attack started a few nights ago. Evil things surged from the castle. We drove them back, but many perished during the assault. Some call them the walking dead, decomposing corpses returning to life with a hunger for human flesh. They hit again the next night. Each night they come with greater numbers. With Caelan dead and Loghain starting a war over the throne, no one responds to my urgent calls for help. I have a feeling tonight's assault will be the worst yet. Alistair, I hate to ask, but I desperately need the help of you and your friends. It isn't just up to me. Though the Grey Wardens don't stand much chance against Loghain without Arl Eamon. Thank you. Thank you. This means more to me than you can guess. Thomas, please tell Murdoch what transpired. Then return to your post. Yes, my lord. Now then, there is much to do before night falls. I put two men in charge of the defense outside. Murdoch, the village mayor, is outside the Chantry. Sir Perth, one of Eamon's knights, is just up the cliff at the windmill, watching the castle. You may discuss with them the preparations for the coming battle. Of course. I have those few who returned from their quest. You know of this, yes? Yes, I question Isolde's decision to send so many knights in search of this relic. But I am a practical man, whereas she is a woman of great faith. Sir Perth was one of the knights sent on this quest. Perhaps you should speak to him if you wish to learn more. Sir Perth insists. He wants me to be with the villagers, so everyone he needs to protect is in one place. I don't mind, to be honest. The point of all this is to protect the villagers, and I can do that best here. This is the last line of defense, should things go amiss. We could bring some men in to stand beside me, but I'd rather keep the monsters away from the villagers if possible. Hopefully we can find the source and stop it before it causes any more damage. With luck, we'll also find Eamon and be able to help him. Very well. Luck be with you, my friend. In the castle, Murdoch. So you're the Grey Warden, are you? I heard they all died with the King. Could be that I did. We aren't going to turn aside anyone who wants to help, though. Don't take me for being an ingrate or nothing. That's good. The survival rate of ingrates is remarkably low, so I hear. Name's Murdoch, mayor of what's left of the village, providing we aren't all killed and hauled off to the castle tonight. I... I hope you're right. I've been trying to hold us together, but it isn't easy. Anyhow, you're here, and they tell me you're in charge. Morale's about what you'd expect. These men aren't soldiers. They're villagers defending their homes, and they're frightened. It would help if we had decent equipment. There weren't enough swords in Owen's shop, and the men's armor is nearly falling off. I don't think we're in any shape to fight. We'll do our best, of course, but, well, I have my doubts. I just hope I'm alive tomorrow morning. We need what little armor and weapons we got repaired, and quickly, or half of us will be fighting without either. Owen's the only blacksmith who can do it, but the stubborn fool refuses to even talk. If we're to be ready for tonight, we'll need that crotchety bastard's help. His daughter, Valena, is one of the Alessa's maids, so he hasn't heard from her since this whole business started. He demanded we attack the castle, break down the gate, and force our way in. I said it was impossible, but he wouldn't listen. He's locked himself in the smithy now. I can't force him to do repairs. He said he'd rather die first. I'd appreciate it. If he doesn't help, he'll die like the rest of us. What good will that do anyone then? Tell them to maintain watch. I don't want a surprise attack. Go away. Curse you. Leave me in peace. You've already taken everything out of my stores. There's nothing left. Huh? Who is that? What do you want? I've been to enough. 
Hmm? All right, all right. Let me undo the locks. All I ask is that you don't make any trouble. Somebody's been drinking. So I let you in. You wanted to talk. Now we're talking. Mind telling me who you are? A Grey Warden, is it? <laughs> it takes all kinds. Funny, you didn't sound like an elf through the door. Can't say I expected that. Anyhow, my name's Owen. Though you might already know that. Care to join me as I get besotted? Or is there something in particular you wanted? Why should I help Murdoch when he won't help me? Hmm? My girl, Valena, is one of the Alessa's maids and she's trapped up there in the castle, but the mayor won't send anyone for her. She's been my life since my wife passed on two years ago. Now she's dead, or soon to be. I don't care what happens to me or the village or anyone. It'd do me the world of good to think maybe someone like you could go in and find her. Provided any of us live through the night. If you look for Valena, I'll reopen the smithy and make some repairs for the militia. I can do that much. Not good enough. Murdoch said the same damned thing, and I didn't believe him either. I want a promise. Promise me that you'll look for her. That you'll bring her back to me if you can. We will do our best. Please believe us, friend. I'll accept that. It's something to hope for, at least. Right then. It seems I have some work to do relighting the forge, and I suppose I'll have to find some iron. Hmm, maybe at the mill. Uh, Murdoch just better send his men here as soon as possible if I'm going to get to all these repairs and get them done by nightfall. If you need anything done, well... Just let me know. I've got a lot to do now, so you'll have to excuse me. Wonderful. Intruders. I hope you have a good reason for breaking and entering into my home. No, no, have to run the place. It's not like I could stop people like you anyway. The name's Dwin. Pleased to meet you. Now, kindly tell me why you're here. So what? You recruiting for him? I'll tell you what I told Murdoch. I'm not risking my neck for this town. So, that's what it comes down to, huh? <laughs> Fine. I'll go. If you want me out there so badly. Huh. <laughs> Spoken like someone who doesn't know me very well. Go tell Murdoch he won. And I better see you out there in the square when those creatures come. Greetings, Grey Warden. I am as relieved as Ban Tegan is to see you here. I must admit, I do not know how to address an elf in your position. I do not wish to be rude. Grey Warden it is, then. And thank you kindly. I am Sir Perth, until recently in direct service of Arl Eamon of Redcliffe. For now, my charge is defending the village from these evil assaults. Would that I had chosen not to seek out the urn of sacred ashes. Perhaps I would have fended off whatever evil befell the castle. Or perhaps I would be dead. Ah, oh, well. With a Grey Warden aiding our defense, perhaps all is not lost. We have sufficient armor and weapons, but my knights are too few to stand against the monsters without assistance. Perhaps you could approach Mother Hannah in the Chantry for some holy protection against these evil creatures. Otherwise, I do not know what else you could provide beyond your own talents. We're as prepared for the onslaught as we could possibly be, all things considered. No one told me of this. Oil, you say? How much, exactly? 
assuming that would hurt them. Yes, I see what you have in mind. That might be effective, if used carefully. A fine tactic. Provided it actually kills them and you don't end up having to deal with Fleming undead. Yes, excellent idea. I'll send some men to collect the oil. We'll use it to slow these creatures down. Have you anything else to ask me in the meantime? No, nothing comes to mind. If you have not spoken to the mayor, Murdoch, you should. His militia is far more in need of aid than we are. As you wish, Grey Warden. Make a watch over you. Let's... You are of elven blood and a stranger, yet you defend a home that is not your own. We are grateful for that. Not many in these modern days would honestly say the same. You are a man of worth, and the Maker will smile upon you. Allow me to introduce myself. I am revered Mother Hannah, head of this Chantry, which for the moment is a place of refuge for these poor villagers. Surely this cannot be the entire village. These few are all who are left. All those who cannot defend themselves, yes. They are terrified of tonight's attack, and I fear these walls will not keep them safe. What can I do to help with your task? I have done all I can for them. I pray for them each night and seek the Maker's forgiveness for their sins before they face their deaths. What Sir Perth seeks is something that is not in my power to give. Sir Perth believes that I can protect them against these creatures, a shield only the Maker can provide, and that I withhold this power. Well, can't you just tell him the Maker will watch over him? Morale is a powerful thing, you know. You mean you want me to let them think the Maker protects them in a real sense? I will not lie to them like that. I suppose their belief in the Maker's power could inspire them, but it just seems like trickery. Very well. If it keeps them alive, I will do what I must. I have a number of silver cast holy symbols. Tell Sir Perth that he can have them and that wearing them will confer the Maker's protection. Now please, let me tend to these poor folk. I must do what I can, and I suggest you do the same. Another doomed soul come to drown their sorrows here, I see. If you came here for a drink, you'll have to talk to Lloyd. He's got a vice grip on the spigots. I'm just here to keep the boys from mutiny. Not much. He's very quiet. Says his name's Beric and he's here to meet his brother, but I think he's lying. He's a bit... creepy. What business? Without the castle soldiers, the only customers we have are local. And they're all in the militia with no money to spend. The few with any money are here, but it's not enough to justify working. Lloyd's a... greasy pig. And if I didn't need this job so badly, I... He gropes me and pays me next to nothing. But I suppose it could be worse. Not like I've got many options. No, no, that'll just make things worse. And that's very sweet, but I'll be fine. I'd like that. And maybe we could talk after the battle tonight. If we're still here, that is. Later on, yes. Lloyd will lock himself in the cellar, and I'll go to the Chantry. Are you... fighting tonight? That's... good to hear. I didn't know that. Keep safe. He's not looking for company. And that's all we have in common. I'm not here to talk. You're simply here to act suspiciously, I take it. What? I'm... Not acting suspiciously. Oh, now that was convincing. Look, just because you're an elf doesn't mean we should be friends. I was just told to... I mean, just leave me alone. Nothing! Nobody told me to do anything. Just because you're a Grey Warden doesn't mean you can go around threatening people. I just, uh, overheard it, that's all. If you'll excuse me, I want to get to the Chantry before the sun goes down. If I... But I never... 
Oh, all right, I'll tell you. Just... just don't hurt me. This is more than I bargained for. Look, they just paid me to watch the castle and send word if anything should change. But they never said anything about monsters. I haven't even been able to report anything since this started. I'm stuck, same as you, I swear. A tall fellow, I forget his name. He, uh, said he was working for Hal. Arl Rendon Hal. He's an important man, Terran Logain's right hand. So I didn't do anything wrong. Just to report any changes, honest. All I could send word about was the Arl getting sick. After that, monsters started coming from the castle. I don't know anything about these creatures. When the Arl got sick, I got scared that people would think I was involved. But I swear I don't know anything about it. They sent me to watch. Maybe they knew the Arl would get sick. I don't know. Here, this is a letter from them. It has instructions and everything. Keep it, do whatever you want with it. I just thought I was serving the king and making a bit of coin on the side. You have to believe me. Oh, all right, I'll do it. Thank you for your mercy. I won't forget it. Hello there, friend. Can't say we've ever met before. Stranger to the village, I take it. Haven't had many travelers lately. All this nonsense is bad for business. Bet you regret coming, yes? Brave words. Brave words. Well, we'll see when night falls, won't we? So, what'll it be? You are here to drink, I hope. Fine. Make them quick. I'm not abandoning my tavern because of a few monsters. The second I'm in the Chantry, Murdoch and his men will be here drinking all my ale. Not a lot. Castle guards stopped coming in about a week back. It's unusual, too. They were my main source of business. After a few days, I thought it strange enough to ask. But nobody heard anything. Anyone going up to the castle didn't come back. When the first attack hit, I locked myself in the cellar. I say we just wait for help to come. Why? When them creatures attack, I locked myself in the cellar, just batten the hatches and wait it out. What's the point in getting myself killed with all the rest of them? If that makes me a coward, then I'm a coward. But Van Tegan said we didn't have to. He said, he said... Ah, fine. Fine, I'll go. But all of this better be here when I get back. I don't want the place drunk out from under me. Blasted bloody... I see you got that bastard Lloyd to join the militia. It's about time he did something to help out. I guess this... puts me in charge. <laughs> Poor Lloyd will have an apoplexy just thinking about it, eh? Fair enough. Let me see what Lloyd stored in the back. You can help yourself. Have you spoken to the revered mother? Has she offered anything? If they are the same as the symbols worn by their priests, well, that would more than suffice. I do not approve of majory and such, but the symbols of the Chantry are holy and blessed by the Maker, not the work of mages. I will send some men to collect the amulets. Please give my regards to Mother Hannah for seeing some sense at last. There is still time before the sun goes down. If you have not yet spoken to Murdoch, or if there is anything you have planned... Good luck to you then, and may the Maker watch over us all.
It's time, men. Know that we fight for the Maker. Our Arrives and we survive the night. We are victorious. And though this victory came at great cost, we must remember none of us would be here were it not for the heroism of these good folk beside me. I thank you, good sir. Truly the Maker smiled on us when he sent you here in our darkest hour. Surely these people deserve some small celebration, don't you think? There is time yet. Let us bow our heads and give honor to those who gave their lives in defense of Redcliffe. Now they walk with he who is their maker. Long may they know the peace of his love. With the maker's favor, the blow we delivered today is enough for me to enter the castle and seek out your Arl. Be wary, and watch for signs of renewed attack. We shall return with news as soon as we are able. Now we've no time to waste. Meet me at the mill. We can talk further there. I'm still amazed we made it through the night in one piece and one. They'll be telling stories about this for years, I bet. Fighting's not over. We still have Darkspawn to battle, and if the Arl sends out the call, I'll be there for him. No offense, but I've lived under the Arl my whole life. I'll fight when he calls me, or when I absolutely need to, and that's it. If you'll excuse me, I think I'll offer the Maker a bit of thanks for not choosing to be a wrathful god today. Good luck to you. Sort of like coming home. Odd how quiet the castle looks from here. You would think there was nobody inside at all. But I shouldn't delay things further. I had a plan. To enter the castle after the village was secure. There is a secret passage here, in the mill, accessible only to my family. I had no idea what lurked in the castle, and I couldn't abandon the people of the village. What if... Maker's breath. Tigan, thank the Maker you yet live. Isolde, you're alive. How did you... What has happened? I do not have much time to explain. I slipped away from the castle as soon as I saw the battle was over, and I must return quickly. And I need you to return with me, Tigan. Alone. What? I... Who is this man, Tigan? 
You remember me, Lady Isolde, don't you? Alistair. Of all the... Why are you here? They are Grey Wardens, Isolde. I owe them my life. Pardon me, I... I would exchange pleasantries, but... Considering the circumstances... Please, Lady Isolde, we had no idea anyone was even alive within the castle. We must have some answers. I know you need more of an explanation, but I... I, I don't know what is safe to tell. Tigan, there is a terrible evil within the castle. The dead waken and, and hunt the living. The mage responsible was caught, but still it continues. And I think Connor is going mad. We have survived, but he won't flee the castle. He has seen so much death. You must help him, Tigan. You are his uncle. You could reason with him. I do not know what else to do. He is. He is being kept alive so far, thank the Maker. Kept alive? Kept alive by what? Something the mage unleashed. So far it allows him and Connor and myself to live. The others were not so fortunate. It killed so many and turned their bodies into walking nightmares. Once it was done with the castle, it struck the village. It wants us to live, but I do not know why. It allowed me to come for you, Tigan, because I begged, because I said Connor needed help. I... I do not know. Oh, Maker's mercy. Could it truly be a demon? I, I can't let it hurt my Connor. You must come back with me, Tigan. Please. He is an infiltrator, I think. Uh, one of the castle staff. We discovered he was poisoning my husband. That is why Eamon fell ill. Eamon was poisoned? He claims an agent of Terran Loghain's hired him. He may be lying, however. I cannot say. For Connor's sake, I promised I would return quickly and only with Tigan. Tigan, I know you could order your men to follow me when I return to the castle. I beg you not to. For Connor's sake. I... I beg your pardon? That's a rather impertinent accusation. No, I did not mean... That is to say, I, I... Please, stop this. An evil I cannot fathom holds my son and husband hostage. I came for help. What more do you want from me? Tigan, I do not have much time. What if it thinks I'm betraying it? It could kill Connor. Please come back with me. Must I beg? The king is dead, and we need my brother now more than ever. I will return to the castle with you, Isolde. Oh, thank the Maker. Bless you, Tegan. Bless you. I have no illusions of dealing with this evil alone. You, on the other hand, have proven quite formidable. Isolde, can you excuse us for a moment? We must confer in private before I return to the castle with you. Please do not take too long. I will be by the bridge. Here's what I propose. I go in with Isolde, and you enter the castle using the secret passage. My signet ring unlocks the door. Perhaps I will distract whatever evil is inside and increase your chances of getting in unnoticed. What do you say? What choice do either of us have? If your business with Eamon is important, you're going to have to go inside to find him. He's right. Without our Eamon, we'll never get the support we need. Sir Perth and his men can watch for danger at the castle entrance. If you can open the gates from within, they can move in and help you. I don't think there's anyone else who can help you. If you choose not to go, then it's up to me to do what I can. Here is my signet ring. It will open the lock on the door in the mill. Whatever you do, Eamon is the priority here. If you have to, just get him out of there. Isolde, me, and anyone else, we are expendable.
You are a good man. The Maker smiled on me indeed when he sent you to Redcliffe. But I can delay no longer. Allow me to bid you farewell. And good luck. <laughs>